So I'm literally just gonna break down how this works for you guys really quick. Just a basic, like, here's how this operates. The actual strategy for it, uh, as far as the best stats that you're gonna want, and all the best combinations uh, is gonna be something we're gonna have to find out together over the coming weeks. But uh, I'm just gonna break it down so you understand exactly how the event works and uh, like the little bit of strategy that we've come up with so far, just working it on test server last week. Overall, you're gonna wanna tailor these two specific heroes, a REM artifact and or collection. I'm gonna use those words interchangeably here. Just understand that if I say artifact, I mean collection. If I say collection, I mean artifact. I'm referring to these when they're finished. So you're gonna wanna build a, a REM artifact uh, that is tailored to her with stats for her and ideally has the skills on it that you want. Uh, the, the most important thing to know about these artifacts is that they have two skills that can be added to them which don't come with every single one. They're upgrades to the artifact. One of them is visible here, skill level plus one, and one of them is secret, which you will only be able to find using a miracle worker totem. And already you're confused. So we're building artifacts, working through a maze, and collecting stats which at the end, you're gonna have basically a bunch of rocks <laughs> and there's seven slots on each artifact. And you're gonna take all these rocks and say, I wanna put this one in this slot. There's like gem slots, right? So you're, you're gemming your artifact with seven different stats. There's a totem. There are totems. <laughs> totems go at the bottom here in these three slots. Each totem will help guide the journey that you go on to build the artifact and gather the stones for that purpose. These totems is how you control, to some degree, what stat rocks you end up with at the end to place into your gem holes. <laughs> I wish it was simpler, it's not. There's so many problems with this mode <laughs> that we're not gonna spend any time on that right now. I wanted this to be quick. So we're gonna do the best with our totem selection to get the resulting rocks that we think will be best for the artifact that we're making. There is one totem in particular called Miracle Worker, which allows you to have an eighth stat hole on the artifact and not just any stat hole but a stat hole where you can connect a secondary ability to the artifact as they come the artifacts have three offensive stat holes and three defensive stat holes and one little hole at belly button hole at the bottom which can take any rock, including a special rock, which gives it another ability. Those are the most valuable rocks for the most part because they add a whole other ability to it, like an E60 engraving or something. So Miracle Worker, I actually have one. I got very lucky in my first 20 totem pulls, which adds this eighth stat hole, which is a Second belly button. Stat hole capable of taking the skill up again. So the res you result artifact with two extra abilities on it. That is how this works. Let me show it to you quickly. So plunder right here. At the end of the exploration, the character receives two random abilities based on the floors that you've reached. If you complete this all the way to the end, there are 10 floors. I have not yet encountered a run where I didn't make it to the end, although I've heard of people doing that. I think that it is very difficult to lose if you make generally good choices along the route. I suspect that it is always possible to finish all 10 floors fairly comfortably. We're just gonna make one with these three right here. We have a few extra copies of them. They're not important. Because of that, we're very unlikely to get any or very many of the red rocks which are the best stats 
the best versions of stats, I should say. You'll see when we get there. Okay, so let's just make, I believe the support artifacts are some of the ones that are the best with or without their extra skill levels and will be the most ge like the most generalized, so they're probably good places to start if you gotta start somewhere, which you do. And after you start, you'll finish off a bunch of quests the same way that when you first got your oak in, you got a bunch of furnish extra furniture uh, Poe coins by completing, you know, acquire the Hypogean background, the, all these kinds of summon 60 pieces of furniture, that kind of stuff, you're going to end up with a lot more totems. And if you work en through enough of these, you'll, I think it's 50, you'll get to customize a totem, which means pick any one you want. And the one you want to pick is Miracle Worker. Uh, as I said, it's the only way that I know of currently to open up the second extra ability, some of which are really, really, really good. They're really hard to get, though, so you only want to use your Miracle Worker totem if you also have a Farewell totem with it. Farewell, we'll, we'll go to it here in a second. Um, let's, yeah, let's just make this Tossy totem. You only want to use this Miracle Worker totem if you also have a... Farewell gift. Obtain one skill level ability at the end of the... So you get the ultra rare rock for a skill level up by using this. It guarantees it. This one. The, the, it says LV on it, but it's called Farewell Gift. Uh, if you combine that with the Miracle Worker, this I here, they're both golden totems, uh, you combine it with this, then you have a guaranteed first extra ability and the possibility of getting that second ability. I, what the third totem you'd want to pick is, my guess is, uh, there, I think there's a purple version of that one. Yeah, here it is. Oh, I have one. That's why it's not down there. It increases your likelihood of getting the skill level up by 100%, uh, which is still jack all. <laughs> but I suspect that you'd want to use Miracle Worker with... Eat with the farewell gift and supreme skill set, which is the other one that says LV on it. That's just a hunch. I don't know yet. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to make sure in a couple days, <laughs> such as the life of a free to play. Um, so we're just going to run this. Okay. Blah, blah. Ooh, we got an Orthros. Not bad. All right, let's keep going. Uh, as I've seen, mostly you want to select the Hypogeans or Celestials. Uh, and as you're, you're just going through, whoops, we're just going through and leveling up these heroes in this way that's kind of reminiscent of some other game modes before. All right, so now we just earned this. It's the lowest level because it's... If we're on floor one, but we got a CDR would be a possible rock we could slot into the artifact. Okay. Grez, that'll probably be decent. Wow, he was already yellow. I don't remember seeing that before. Or maybe, no, I think it buffed. We already had him, and what it did was an automatic upgrade. Uh, okay. Now we've got, now you pick different, it's like uh, Labyrinth, right? I typically have been selecting these ones that require any, any two heroes of the same faction rather than the ones that require two Maulers or two light bearers, or because especially in the early game, you don't know what heroes you're going to end up with. So uh, also they tend to be better. Mostly that's why I do. But we're going to take the United Assault because it's more straightforward and trying to keep this quick, man. we got to move. Okay, keep going. You just keep going like this. So, so these ones with a yellow loop around it, uh, or gold or whatever, seem to be a little bit better even than others. Grants allied heroes a shield equal to 400% of their attack range. Sorry about all Normal damage is that, yeah, I'll take the giant ass shield. That's, no, I don't want to upgrade him. Give me Lucy, sure, yeah. Okay, now we can take three uh, of these. And then there's just these other little things like this, different ways that you, upgrade the stats to higher levels of the same stats well or different stats you'll see it's really easy you just keep clicking through and you want to collect heroes that can be strong on their own as like a five star e80 so like zap zafrael shreds in that setting 
Grez is good everywhere in all game modes, like pretty much always. You can he's at least not gonna be bad, right? So Damon. Uh the hero that I have relied on a lot in this is Kruk. If if you can get Kanisa and Rook, do so. Even if you're in like the fifth floor, I would still probably take him. But it's like I said, I've done about twelve of these. I've yet to run into any problems. Chains of Doom, sure. Anything that doesn't require two of the same faction. That way you can just kind of be loose with it. Orthros upgrade would probably be good too. Ah, we're gonna change the stats on something. Change my full erosion. Careful with that one. The MP, hey, that's not bad. That's better than whatever it was. Ooh, Rowan. Yeah, gimme. Healer. Mm-hmm. Come on now. If you guys haven't played AFK Journey yet, you should check it out. At least when it comes out, you should definitely check it out. That game is so much fun. It is a beautiful second journey into Asperia that's a lot more detailed and complex with more intricate combat, and I could talk, go on about it forever. Uh, if, you, if you like the idea of AFK Journey, come by my stream anytime on Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash Gray. And I'm streaming Journey along with AFK Arena every Saturday and Sunday morning at 9 a.m. PST out in here in Los Angeles. As well as all the time during the week. Armor, I think, just improves the amount of shield you have. There's a lot of weird stats here, too. It's There's so much that they need to do to this game mode before they launch it to live servers. I mean, there should have been so much. But I love the ingenuity. I love that Lilith is trying new things. I don't love at all that they're putting this into all the other game modes. I thought that they would keep it to artifacts, places only, so it would be for new players. If they had kept it to just uh, campaign, faction towers, Twisted Realm, it would have been a great tool for new players to learn about stats and to improve their teams more quickly and catch up in campaign and help other people at the other end of the game, it would, it would improve a lot of the stagnation of late game campaign and faction towers, making them way more fun for people where you start to get uh, alienated because you don't have the right heroes. This could really help push past that. I don't know that it's really gonna make that difference in the other parts of the game where artifacts weren't already, I don't think this is going to overcome that the way that it does in the modes where artifacts are a thing. You guys don't need to look at my face this whole time. <laughs> let's go, let's go, baby, come on. Plus, Kazard's so much more handsome, right? <laughs> Whoops. Hey, our Grez maxed out. See how good he is now? Yay. So we just want to do that to, like, Orthros and Zaph will, will do it. Look, there's our Orthros. Yay. So just make, you know, not dumb choices, mostly, and you can get all the way. It's really, it's really not hard. That's part of the reason I don't understand why... At least why it's so long. I mean, there, it can be fun. It's it's fun a couple times, but not the amount that you're going to have to do it to get these... I mean, you're going to have to do this mm, so many times in the current version of this to get the right stat mix-ups for each hero because these are gonna you're going to want these individuated, I think, to each hero, like specified to them. So... I guess maybe that's something to work on over time. I guess maybe they're thinking about it in a long-term sense, and we're all thinking we want it now. That's one way I think you could look at this. Like, it's supposed to take a long time to get the perfect one. It's supposed to be a game uh, facet. I forget the term, but, like, a, you know, a, a part of the game where you do take your time to, like, you know, it is a year from now you get that perfect one for your Belinda or whatever. I don't know. I'm just riffing here. I'm trying to give them a lot of benefit of a lot of doubt. There's a lot of doubt to give benefit to. 
and see we're we're on floor nine right now we still have not gotten any what do we want yeah buffer is uninteresting buffer just like reduces dot i think life leech <laughs> here's the probability right now we have a four percent chance of getting the top rocks right now also there are mythic plus rocks but as i understand it you can only achieve those through totems that you choose so it it does almost seem like you'll have to choose between getting the extra skill ups or getting the mythic plus stats i haven't even seen any mythic plus stats yet i don't know how big the boost on them is it's probably pretty large there's going to be a great guide to this coming out soon by none other than Season, who's been making incredible AFK guide work for at least the three and a half years I've been playing. She is working on a full-out guide to this that will be available on the Analytica Discord, which is discord.gg slash analytica. That's anal, Y-T-I-C-A, or afkanalytica.com. Another red one, Erosion. Hey, we're getting some big guys. Now we need to swap them because neither of those are good stats at all. So you can see the problem already, but that's part of why support is like, oh, that hasn't happened to me before. We didn't win. Okay. Oh, well, we got an up there. All right, here we go. This is like the last one. So this is the worst team, easily the worst team that I've had. I've I've had a lot more offense on other teams. There's per, not very much offense on this team, as you can see. Um, this is this is really a pretty terrible team, and we still got all the way through to the end. We lost one battle the whole time. I've I've that's actually the first time I've lost a battle, at least that I can recall. Let's get one more good red here, huh? We got a green from that. We got a green from that. <laughs> Are you kidding me? A green on floor 10, and that is the balance and the RNG of this game mode. But as you can see, we had an absolutely terrible team, and we made it all the way to the end. So that part's not difficult. We use these pretty awful totems. I don't see anything new. It's just these two. <laughs> we can improve and unimprove our DOT. All right, guys. Um, that's how it works. So now at the end, here's exactly what I was talking about. We've got these three offensive stone put places and three defensive stone places or maybe the other way around wait um there it is buffer at least it's big i don't know man erosion i guess that is kind of a supporty thing for them to do but and what's what's my choice here mp or i yeah i s okay okay this is the one where if we had the skill up ability we would put it but we didn't get one, which is fine. We kind of figured we wouldn't. They're insanely rare. I did get one one time with a totem collection just like I'm using now. But I think that's extraordinarily rare, as I said. Um, I believe armor just improves your shields. Yeah, it does. We'll use defense, I guess. Okay, <laughs> here's our glorious totem. The point of this wasn't to build a perfect totem. When you want to build a perfect totem, you're going to use a lot of golden... Uh, or perfect artifact. See, I've been mixing it up. I apologize. The point of this wasn't to build the perfect artifact. The point of this was to build an artifact and show you how it works. We have done that here in the end is what it looks like. And here's the skill that we didn't get. If we had gotten the extremely rare skill up ability, we would also add that when the flashing ends for this ability here, uh, the enemy closest to the holder of this will fall asleep for four seconds. See, that's that could be strong. Maybe you want this with a skill up on it. That's up to you. The most important thing strategically for this, now that you've seen it, is to acquire and hang on to your Miracle Worker totems, as many of them as you can. It's the only way to get eight stats on it. It's just my recommendation. It's what I'm going to be doing to start out. Keep an eye out for guides by season, and uh, good luck with it. <laughs> and when you finish, you come up here, you get your rewards. Look at this. You're collecting... Wow, what are these? Oh. Cool. Was that like a bunch of starter copies of them? I guess it was. Neat. I don't remember getting those on test. Hold on. So, well, I already made one for supports, but what about...
Oh yeah, look, we, they gave us like a starter copy of each one. So I don't know what level or whatever you get those. Maybe everyone gets them. Um, either way, hey, that's something. That's neat. But they only have the first ability. Yeah, and the stats are pretty terrible. At least the levels of them are. I think this Orthros one is going to be pretty good for tanks. And the uh, Zorath one. Um, we'll put you back in time to your best state of the last five seconds. Well, that's the secondary ability. The first one, the first time you see fatal damage. You're immune to the damage and you revert to exactly five seconds ago. How great is that? And then the second power up of it reverts you to your best status. So it's more of like a niche, like, um, uh, you know, min max thing. It's still pretty cool. So don't forget to come up here and collect these as you get them. So the more of these that you do, you'll be able to collect these, and then eventually you'll be able to hit your custom version in the Mystic Cage here. Draw 40 times again to customize a Bizarre Totem. Ooh, what did we get? Final Descent is a good one. I think just from quick look at them, I think this is one of the best, because you're, you're increasing your chance to get attack, health, and defense. Those are three of the better ones. Um, and you have a chance of getting them uh, Mythic Plus, which is that stat level that I said I, I haven't even received yet on any of them. Uh, I haven't used many of these, though. Um, so that that's the way to get the best versions of stats. Um, oh, and another one of these, which is, I think is probably the third one you want if you're aiming for two ability, skill uh, extra skill abilities on one. Miracle Worker plus the Farewell Gift plus this Supreme Skill Set Totem, I think, are the three you're going to want to try and get a... a two extra skill um, artifact of any kind. Either you want to spend this custom one on a Miracle Worker. I should probably spend it on a Miracle Worker, but either Miracle Worker or Farewell Gift. You're going to need those two together each time you want to make a really good one, in my opinion. I'm Danger Gray. Come by the stream on Twitch sometime. It's twitch.tv slash Danger Gray every Saturday and Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Also, all throughout the week, which you can find out at the Danger Gray Discord. Check out my Twitch page for more. See you next time. Stay safe, Asperia. Okay, what's up, guys? It's Danger. Uh, I'm just finishing up a couple rounds of the new boss on AFK Journey. All right, let's grab the dailies. Gotta grab the acorns. This is how you ascend. Invite ticket for cheap. Dust for gold, like every good free-to-play. And let's head to the tavern. Dolly got a lot hotter. No, uh, Muriel is in the game, and of course Rowan there, your buddy Rowan. Uh, Dolly's still here, looking hot as ever. Those cute little red cheeks, hotter than ever. Looks like we got an acorn. 